This is Avante Aquendo. When I first heard about this young man, I read about him through social media. And I read about a 14-year-old boy who had very limited verbal behavior, who loved music, merengue, and country, to be exact, and cooking with his mom. But the thing that he loved to do the most was run. His mom said he loved to run. In fact, he would run wherever he was if he could. He would run on the sidewalks on the way to school. He would run while he was in school. And he would run when he's out and about with his brothers. But this passion that he had for running was a source of tremendous concern for his mom. You see, Avante Aquendo had autism spectrum disorder. And like so many children living with autism, he had the propensity to wander from safe situations. And on a fall day in October 2013, he went to school as he had every other day since September. He spent the morning with his class, and in the afternoon, as his class was transitioning from one room to the next, he wandered away from his class. He separated himself. He went down the stairs to the main floor and out the door. There are security cameras lined up all along the perimeter of the school, and they captured footage of him darting across the street until you couldn't see him anymore. And this footage of Avante is the last footage that anyone ever saw of him alive. In fact, months later, on a freezing cold day in January, the police contacted his mom to let her know that they had found his remains in the East River in Queens. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, autism spectrum disorder affects one in 68 children. That's about two million children in North America. Autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disorder that may affect a person's behavior, their ability to communicate, and their ability to interact with others. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing it. It's a spectrum disorder, which means that while everyone is affected with a diagnosis with autism, they're affected in those broad categories. It's expressed very differently depending on who the individual is. And I'm going to illustrate what I mean by this with an example under one of the categories of communication. I've worked with one little boy with autism who, much like Avante, didn't have a lot of verbal behavior. He, he spoke with one or two words when he did speak. We were teaching him to communicate with other tools. He was using an iPad, and when he touched the icons on the screen, it would give him his voice. If he touched juice, I would know, it would tell me, I want juice, and that's when I could get him his needs met. Contrast him with another little boy that I worked with who had very sophisticated verbal communication skills. In fact, he would carry on conversations with me five, ten minutes at length on a variety of topics. We would talk about dinosaurs, we would talk about trains, we could talk about the weather. He understood the reciprocity and he could converse with me in a meaningful way. But in his communication, his, the area that he needed to work on for communication was around understanding the subtle nuances in our, our language. For example, my mom used to call my little brother a tiger. He's going to kill me for sharing that here. But she did in an endearing way, that's what she called him. This young man that I just described to you who had the ability to communicate with me would hear that and think, that's a boy that is not a tiger. He would take it very literally. So we would need to work on teaching him some of those subtle nuances. So you see, individuals with autism present with very unique strengths, weaknesses, areas that they need to work on, and preferences. And we would work on each of those depending on who they are and what their specific needs are. But a there are far too many children with autism who are wandering and bolting and going missing, much like Avante. There are hundreds of cases in the media, and there was a study published in 2012 which de demonstrated that 49% of children with autism have wandered from a safe situation at least one time in their lifetime. One time is far too many. 65% of those kids have close calls with traffic injuries, and a quarter of them had close calls with drowning, which is ultimately what happened to Avante, they believe. 
Avante walked out of his school. But it's actually more common that children with autism are wandering and bolting out of their own homes. Parents are trying to keep their kids safe and they're finding it very challenging to do so. I recently heard about a parent who rearranges all of the furniture in her home, such that, not all of the furniture, the sofa. Every day at the end of the day, she puts the sofa in front of the front door. This way, if her son tries to leave in the middle of the night, which she has done on multiple occasions, he will need to climb up and over her body and she will wake up. She will be there to save him from leaving the home. That's how she manages to keep him safe at night. It should not be so difficult for parents to keep their own children safe. And we're hearing that the parents who are struggling with the wandering behavior, parents who have a child with autism also deal with social, emotional, and financial challenges that parents and individuals who do not have a child with special needs cannot even fathom. And yet the parents that are dealing with this child with autism who waltz or wanders report that the wandering is the most significant challenge that they are contending with on a day-to-day -day basis. And they, many of them do not know how to deal with it. They've never received any professional guidance on how to deal with it. So they're sitting there trying to keep their child safe. They don't know what to do. They feel powerless to keep their own child safe. Clinically proven treatments, like those that are based on applied behavior analysis, or ABA, are effective at helping children with autism improve their quality of life, as well as for their families. But they can be uh, very expensive and hard to access. Please. Do not take my word on it. There are hundreds of journal articles published in peer-reviewed journals demonstrating the effectiveness of ABA in helping to improve the quality of life for children with autism and their families. ABA is a treatment that applies interventions based on the science of learning. So how do we learn to do things? How do we learn new skills? And how do we deal with challenging behavior? Why do we do what we do? There's a lot of science around that. And we can evaluate things like wandering behavior, assess and figure out what we need to do to help support these families. What can we do to teach them something different? So we apply these interventions to socially meaningful behaviors, like keeping kids with autism safe, and along the way, we evaluate what we're doing. So we don't just arbitrarily select a treatment. We select a treatment that's based on each unique learner or student, and then we apply it, and we measure how they're doing with it so that I can make clinical decisions based on how they're doing. I need to know, is my intervention working? If it's not, then I need to change something about how I'm teaching. The student is always right. My college students love it when I say that. It's true though, if they're not learning what I'm trying to teach, I've selected possibly the wrong thing to teach at the wrong time. Doesn't mean they're not gonna be able to learn it later. Maybe they don't have the prerequisites. Maybe the way that I've set up the program isn't the way it was supposed to be set up. Measurement is key. How are we tracking progress? And it's working on meaningful behaviors. There is an urgent need to support families who are living with a child with autism who bolts or wanders. The government, in, the provincial government and insurance companies are spending billions of dollars on treatment for children with autism that is based on ABA because they know it works. But it's very expensive and hard to access and in some cases parents do not even know that it's a solution that they could choose for their particular child. It would be a remarkable world if all children with autism could have access to ABA, the most effective treatment for children with autism. The solution for me is threefold. First, we need to inspire students to pursue graduate work in ABA and ensure that there are enough academic institutions to support the demand. I had to get my master's outside of my own country at the time. There were no programs available to me. Number two. How can we leverage innovations in technology to make ABA more affordable and accessible to those who want it? I have seen families who desperately want ABA for their kid with autism, but they can't get it. It's too expensive, or, and so they have to wait on the huge wait lists. And finally, this is a call out to my, favorite, my fellow behavior analysts. We need to be better at disseminating 
this as a solution for families so that they can make informed choices. Many families don't even realize the power that ABE can have in improving the quality of life for children with autism, specifically to the, this issue of bolting and wandering. We need to be better as behavior analysts at disseminating this as a solution for parents to make an informed choice about. Parents should be able to go to bed at night in their own bed and sleep feeling rested in the morning not having to worry that their child is going to leave their own home in the middle of the night. Parents should be able to send their child to school, know and expect that they're going to come home to them at the end of the day safely. Thank you.